question, I'd ask you to come down to the microphones, and while you're coming down, I'll ask the first one. Uh, this question is uh, probably directed at you, Chief Bates, and anyone else is free to jump in. Three guys. Uh, my, my presumption is, and I think it's true, that the expansion of the Border Patrol in recent years is mostly due related to the response to 9-11. It's mostly an anti-terrorism funding, which was brought, uh, which has boosted many different parts of the federal government related to security. At the checkpoints in Jefferson County, which are on SR-104 and US-101, I wanted to ask about how many people have been caught for immigration violations, how many for some sort of drug trafficking, or how many for some kind of planned act of terrorism? Who might know the answer? I think the microphones are live on the table. All right, thank you very much. Um, at our checkpoints, uh, we made 15 apprehensions of uh, persons who were undocumented in the country. Um, and without breaking it down, we met uh, the rest of seven United States citizens for a variety of offenses. Anything related to terrorism? No, nothing related to terrorism. Michelle. Okay. Um, Michelle Sandoval, whoops. Thanks again, all of you, for participating. I appreciate it. I did want to acknowledge um, that there are representatives here from uh, Patty Murray's office, Maria Campbell's office, and Norm Dick's office. So I thank them for attending as well. Um, These questions are asked because of some concerns, thanks very much, some concerns that um, some citizens, some community members um, asked me this weekend. So I'll try to be, um, wrap them all up into sort of uh, process questions. Um, uh, for the protocol for Border Patrol, is it proper, appropriate protocol for Border Patrols to be responding to calls that come in over the scanner to the Sheriff's Office? Um, is it appropriate protocol for uh, the Border Patrol to be what seems to be shadowing sheriff officers or state patrol when responding to traffic stops? And uh, lastly, in repetitive instances of uh, citizens being stopped while walking, not driving, walking in their um, neighborhood, repeatedly, perhaps by different officers, is this, does this constitute racial profiling? Thank, Thank you. Chief Bates, and we'll come over here. I'm trying to remember all of your questions. Three parts, I believe, to, to this. Uh, is it routine for us to shadow uh, local law enforcement? No, it would not be routine uh, for us to, uh, uh, to shadow local law enforcement. Uh, we, in many communities, we are contacted by local law enforcement after they make uh, arrests uh, to uh, tra help translate uh, in the Spanish language. Uh, it, it does happen. The, uh, the, the question of uh, do we have the ability or the legal right to approach people and talk to them? Yes. I think that was actually demonstrated in, the, uh, in one of the presentations. So, Yes, we do do that, and we do ask people their immigration status. I'm sorry? Scanners, as you listen in on Scanning them. and, in, uh, no, it would not be routine, and it would not be our policy to scan uh, the, the uh, actually, I, you know, it, it's not illegal, no. Anybody can scan and listen, the public can scan and listen, but if you're asking me is it our policy, to scan and listen and shadow the police. No, that would not be our policy. Does anyone else want to speak to either of those questions? Uh, Jason. You hear me? Okay. Um, as far as, as listening on radio frequencies, we're trying to come up with some communal frequencies for officer safety purposes. Um, would we respond under an officer safety situation where we heard something on the radio where a Jefferson County Sheriff's officer was in trouble? Absolutely, we would. Um, this was not that situation. It was someone responding before the Sheriff's office. 
I, I would need to know all the circumstances sure. surrounding it. Mean, Maybe, and, 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 no, it would. Okay. We understand the question when we've heard their response. If, if anyone wants to speak about sp specifics with these folks after the, the forum, that would be fine. Mm -hmm. If you have something to think yeah, you know, I was going to say, uh, uh, as has been mentioned, it's certainly legal, but uh, to me, you know, it raises again that question about community policing. I know that there is a lot of fear in the Latino community just now. And I think it really does, you know, it, it, it does a disservice to local enforcement efforts. And, you know, of course, the, the police chiefs here could speak to that. But, uh, you know, it does a disservice when people are afraid to use your services because they believe that they're entangled in some way with customers. With, with some, any kind of immigration enforcement. Actually, I just want to speak to one point, and, and I think this really is important for this community to know. Um, we have, in our conversations with the sheriffs and police departments, I've been very forthright in when, uh, if they need translation for victims, people who are coming to the police as victims in, uh, in, to crimes, uh, that is uh, a place where if we were asked to do that, okay? We're not going to come in there and be asking questions about citizenship or alienage, okay? That would be inappropriate, and I put that policy out. There's a difference between somebody who's under arrest by the police for a crime, and then we come to assist in determining, uh, uh, helping the police with the situation, and then we later determine that that person's here illegally. That is different than a victim coming to the police. And once again, we support the police in, in everything that they're doing as far as getting additional translators, getting their officers trained to speak the language. Okay. We're providing a service to the community because we are members of this community. The Border Patrol agents that work out of the Port Angeles office are members of your community. They go to your churches. They go to your, their children go to your schools. They are not some foreign invader that has come in. There's a misunderstanding here. We're part of the community. We want to be a good neighbor. Okay, let's have the next question, Tom.